Hello and welcome back and in this lesson we will cover what are dielectrics, what is dielectric constant, what is polarization of dielectric materials and finally a visual representation of how introduction of dielectric changes the electric field, voltage and energy of a capacitor. So capacitors used in various applications have two long strips of metal foil separated by a plastic sheet. That could be made of manganese or mylar or some other material and uh, then this combination is rolled up to a compact unit that can provide the required capacitance and energy. Now the question you should ask or should come to your mind is why do we need to insert a plastic strip that we call a dielectric between the two metal foils? Well there are three benefits of doing this. One, it is impossible to have two metal foils or plates separated by a thin layer of air since they would tend to collapse or come in contact with each other and we do not want that to happen. So this plastic layer neatly separates the two metallic plates. Two, when you have air between the plates, there is a limit to which the capacitor can be charged or potential difference created and therefore a limit to which charge can be loaded and energy stored. Now the limit is on account of the buildup of charge and therefore the electric field between the plates that when it reaches a certain value it breaks down the air and tends to ionize it. Now if the air gets ionized it would permit movement of electrons directly through the space between the plates and that is something we do not want to happen. But when you put a dielectric between the plates, the material can tolerate the strong electric field and does not ionize or more technically speaking, avoid an electric breakdown to a larger extent. As a result, you can charge up the capacitor a lot more and therefore have more energy packed into it. But then you got to remember that every capacitor with a dielectric still has a limit to which it can be subjected to a voltage or potential difference between the plates beyond which it will burn up. And you can actually see these limits printed on the capacitor. The third reason is that the capacitance of a capacitor with given dimensions goes up when you put a dielectric between the plates compared to vacuum. Now let us slide in a dielectric in between the plates and what happens is that the battery ends up pumping more charge on the plates to maintain the potential difference V0 across the plates and the charge on the plates increases by a factor of K so that the new charge on the plates is K times Q and the new capacitance value then is KQ by V0. So you see the capacitance of this capacitor has gone up by a factor of k. Next we consider the same setup but a little differently. What we'll do is charge up the capacitor to value q and remove the battery. Then if we measure the potential difference between the plates we know it will be v0. Now before we move ahead remember the battery has been removed and the circuit is open and charge has nowhere to go but stay on the plates. So next we put a dielectric between the plates and what you'll find is that the potential difference drops and say the value becomes V. So the new capacitance of the capacitor is C which can be written as Q by V. Now since V is smaller than V0 the capacitance has gone up. So what we see is that the introduction of dielectric in either case resulted in increase of capacitance. In first case we see that for a given potential difference V0 we were able to load up more charge on the plates and in the second case for a given charge Q we could maintain the charge on the capacitor at a lower potential difference V. So what we can say is that with the dielectrics we can increase the capacitance of the capacitors and therefore the energy stored. 
So now it is time to introduce you to the term dielectric constant K of the dielectric material, which is defined as the ratio of C to C naught, where C is the capacitance of the capacitor without the dielectric and C naught is the capacitance with the dielectric and the K value is always greater or equal to one. So K is basically the factor by which you can enhance the capacitance of a capacitor by introducing the dielectric. We can also say that since charge is constant in both cases at Q, Q is equal to C naught V naught is equal to CV or C by C naught is equal to V naught by V. Then we can also write this equation as V naught by V which is equal to K or V is equal to V naught by K. Now the value of K for vacuum by definition is one. So you see here the value of K for air is not very different from vacuum, but for mylar, the K value is 3.1, which means that if you put a mylar layer in between the plates for a given charge on the plate, the capacitance will go up by a factor of 3.1. One. So now let us go ahead and try to understand how charge is induced in a dielectric and polarization of molecules happens in the material. Well, we learned earlier that when you put a dielectric between capacitor plates that have a fixed charge Q on them, the potential difference decreases by a factor of K. So if the potential difference reduces by a factor of K, the electric field E should also decrease by the same factor. So if E naught was the field value before inserting the plates, the value of electric field after putting the plate should be E naught by K. Now, since the electric field value has become lower, the obvious conclusion that would come to your mind is that the surface charge density on the plates would have reduced. Otherwise, how else can the electric field reduce? But that does not happen. That is the surface charge density of the plate remains unchanged. What does happen is that an induced charge appears on the surface of the dielectric slab that is opposite in sign to that of the plates. Well, just make note that the dielectric was neutral before it was put inside and continues to be neutral. The induced charge appears only due to redistribution of positive and negative charges within the dielectric material and this redistribution is called polarization and this polarization creates an electric field of its own that is opposite to the capacitor's electric field thereby reducing the electric field by a factor of k. We can also establish a relationship between the induced surface charge on the dielectric and the charge on the plate. So if we say sigma i is the induced surface charge on the surface of the dielectric and that on the plates of the capacitor is sigma, then we could say that the net charge on the surface of the capacitor plates is sigma minus sigma i. So in a way, this is the net surface charge density on the capacitor that is creating the required field for the capacitor to function. Okay, now E naught or the electric field without the dielectric is equal to sigma by epsilon naught as we learned in the earlier lesson and E, the effective electric field in presence of the dielectric is sigma minus sigma i divided by epsilon naught. So we can say that sigma i is equal to sigma times one minus one by k. So if k for the dielectric is high, we can say that this part becomes small and the induced charge becomes closer to the original charge density. For k equal to one, that is in presence of vacuum, we obviously end up getting induced charge as zero. Now let us try to understand another term that is heavily used when studying dielectrics. We know that C is equal to k C naught, that is equal to k epsilon naught a by d. So this expression k epsilon naught you see here is termed as permittivity of the dielectric and is denoted by the symbol epsilon. 
So when K equals one, that is you have vacuum, epsilon becomes epsilon naught. And for this reason, epsilon naught is also sometimes termed as permittivity of the free space. We can therefore also write C is equal to epsilon by AD. Also, if E is equal to E naught by K, we can rewrite this as E is equal to sigma by epsilon naught K or this equals sigma by epsilon. We could also express the energy density U as half K epsilon naught E square or you can write this as half epsilon E square. So this equation shows us that you can get very high capacitance if you increase surface area of plates, reduce the distance and put a dielectric that has high K value. Now, let us try to understand what really is happening in the dielectric at a molecular level when it is put between capacitor plates. The first thing to remember here is that dielectrics are non-conductors and do not have free charges or electrons to move around and redistribute themselves. So the question is, how does a surface charge appear? Well, what is happening is that when the dielectric is put in the electric field E of the capacitor, the molecules of dielectric start behaving like dipoles. And this happens because the electric field tends to push the electrons of the molecules in one direction and the positive charge of the molecule in other direction, such that the molecule orients itself somewhat like this. So you see there is a kind of redistribution of charges within the molecule and we call such molecules as induced dipoles. And if you observe these layers of charge near the capacitor plates, they have a certain charge density that we earlier termed as sigma i. And remember, these are bound charges as compared to free charge that comes out and into the capacitor plates. So these surface charges tend to build their own electric field that is opposite the electric field of the capacitor and therefore tends to reduce its strength and any reduction in the field strength also reduces the potential difference between the plates. You could also interpret this as the bound polarized charges of dielectric having a cancellation effect on the free charges on the capacitor plates and therefore reducing the effective free charge available thereby reducing the electric field strength and therefore the potential difference as well. So let us sum up this lesson by visualizing what happens when the dielectric is outside and is then slid between the capacitor plates. Well, at first we have the original field with no dielectric interfering. Then we go ahead and put the dielectric in between and till now no rearrangement of charges has happened, but then the polarization of molecules happens and induced surface charge appears on the dielectric. This induced charge sets up its own electric field and this field you can see is opposite that of the original field but is not strong enough to cancel the original field E but it does reduce the effective electric field and the resultant field strength is a vector sum of the two field values. Now the reduced electric field strength also implies lowering of the potential difference V and therefore an increase in capacitance C. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and please do not forget to subscribe to this channel for many more interesting videos.